right, very happy to bring on our our next guest today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow, I think we actually we have Paul Joseph Watson on the show, or Ooh, Thursday. Yeah. I, I lose track of the days. It's so good stuff. Uh, we're going to have Thomas Sowell on the show uh, soon. Boom. The man is not uh, not feeling particularly well. Uh, oh. But I'm really glad to have our next guest on. I think we've written about him at lotofcredit.com. Yes. You can follow him on YouTube. Um, I think if you just search his name, Avi Yemeni, you can follow him on Twitter yeah. at Azraeli Avi. Uh, Avi. I keep mispronouncing the name because it's these are not Avi words Yemeni. that I pronounce. Yeah. He's, he's an yeah. Australian yeah. Uh, Australian Jewish reporter who oh. recently did in a, he does a YouTube video. I don't want to use the word reporter because that's almost an insult now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but recently did a, a show with Jim Jeffries on Comedy Central, and then he it, we found out afterward that he was recording Jim Jeffries with a hidden camera and it's broken brilliant. across the media. Brilliant. Just, yeah. just brilliantly done Smart. by him. Uh, Avi, how are you, sir? Thank you for being here. I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, now, this is, you've always had a, a, a big presence online on YouTube and you've definitely, though, kind of broken through and exploded with this recent story. Um, what is the, re explain for people first, I guess, who don't exactly know what the timeline is. You were on a, a show, Jim Jeffries' show. <laughs> So they, call, they called me actually a few months ago and they asked me if I'll take part. It was, it was in December. Um, they asked me if I'll take part in a, uh, a, a show with Jim Jeffries uh, discussing immigration, discussing the U.S. border wall. Um, they were in Australia at the time doing a tour both in Melbourne and Sydney. And I said to him, listen, in principle, I would do the show in two, on two conditions. You don't have any neo-Nazis white supremacy, anyone like that on it with me. Reasonable. And, um, you, and you don't chop and change my answers. Well, you know, I'm pretty proud and I'm pretty confident in what I have to say. If you're willing to keep my answers as whole, I'm happy to go on it. The third one was a technical issue. I wasn't actually in the country at the time. I said, you'll have to wait till I'm, uh, I'm back in Australia. And they said to me, yep, no worries. You're back in January. They'll fly me to Singapore to do it. Sounds to me like we have a diva on our hands, folks. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me next to Nazis and don't take me out of context. Who do you right. think you are, the queen? He'll be asking for blue uh, uh, M&Ms next. <laughs> <laughs> only, <know>. only. <laughs> All right, so spoiler alert for people who don't know. Uh, they did... Almost, one could argue, the exact opposite of that. So <laughs> yeah. I have some clips. Uh, we've taken them from your YouTube channel. Please, everyone, uh, again, search Avi. Uh, I want to make sure I get this right. Avi Yemeni uh, on you. Just search him and you'll find him. Uh, here is a clip that shows people who have not been following it yet. Go watch the whole video, what the interview showed on, on, on air on Comedy Central versus what actually happened. I think we should allow the white South African farmers in. What about the black South Africans? Uh, I'll take that as a no. What about the black South Africans? Listen, I did a thing on, uh, I went to a, uh, oh, listen a second, you want to hear that story or do you want to talk shit? What gives anyone the right to tell anyone where they can and can't live? When you import this culture, what do you think is going to happen? Australia's going to end up the same hole that they came from that they were escaping. See what I really said. What gives anyone the right to tell anyone where they can and can't live? Really? Like, um, like, borders? Uh, I know, like, 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 borders, yeah. but wouldn't it just be nice if... If we got to a place in society where we had no a utopia, where we all just lived as I, 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 on, 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 on a level I agree with you. We may say I'm a dreamer. I think, I think, I think, I think most most people, most you know, sensible people would agree with you in theory. Yeah. But in practice, it's not. It's a, it goes against human nature. It just doesn't work. And again, everyone can go and, and watch the whole video. I strongly encourage them to watch not only the whole video, but uh, th you've released a series of videos here. It's almost like Andrew Breitbart, yep. drip, drip, drip. So people, it, as it unfolds, it gets worse and worse. Um, wh first off, why did you film this going in? Did you expect? Obviously, you expected this to happen because you named your terms, but you probably expected them to still violate it. It seems. Well, yeah, I, I've been doing, uh, you know, in, in Australia, I've been doing this for a while now. I used to own gyms, and over the last few years, I, I've sort of naturally progressed into what I'm doing now. And I've noticed over time just being taken out of context um, keeps sort of repeating itself. Uh, it's, it's seeing them line me up with people that I don't want to be associated with, uh, ironically, people who, who usually hate me yeah. and what I stand for. Nazis, um, not huge fan of Australian yeah, Jews, yeah. typically. No, no. Um, so I, I just, my gut told me to film it. Um, and I thought, and I went into it thinking, you know what, either way, I'm going to get it, you know, this, it's a win, win, win for me because I'm going to go to Singapore. I'm either, either they're going and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Either they're going to cut something up that I'll be proud to put out myself or 
um, they'll see me putting down these cameras and they'll pick a fight with me saying, what are you doing? And I'll say, I don't trust you. So, right. And I've said that from the beginning. And they'll kick me out and I'll have that on film. Or what happened was I, they were just so self-absorbed when I walked in there. No one noticed me putting two phones down. And uh, <laughs> I was going to say, were these hidden in like a co- in a coffee cup or no, something? No, they were literally two phones. That's why one is blurry, one isn't. And I was nervous one was cu- going to cut and it, it did play out like that. And, and I, I laid it on a couch. Like, it was two two phones that I I literally had to put a pillow behind to strop up. (laughs) It was like an iPhone Mr. Bill. Oh, just going to film here. No, no. Not very sophisticated. Wow. Uh, First off, before we get into what your actual views are and how egregious of a sin this is uh, from a media standpoint, uh, what are the – I don't know what it's like over there in Australia or Singapore. Do you know what the, the, the consent laws are as far as filming? Were you worried about that? I wasn't because you know I went into it. I tend to go into these things not thinking about the um, the legal issue. Yeah, uh, um, but Singapore Singapore does have pretty strict rules. Um, from looking at it now, uh, I think he's broken. A, uh, they, they they essentially have blasphemy laws. A lot of the stuff he said about Islam could uh, could send him to prison in Singapore, not me. So I'm not I'm not too worried. Well, and that's well, let's, we have a clip of that in a second because he was going to uh, draw Muhammad, and he actually would. Say, and by the way, I have no problem with people. I've, I've we've Bob Ross painted Muhammad on the show. That being said, he was far more offensive to Muslims than anything that you said, and so I think the double standard there is important. But um. Here's one thing. This is this is where I up, and I, I think Joe and I were talking about this before. To me, if he really dislikes your views, if your views are are that heinous, they're that evil, they don't need to doctor it. You yeah. know, in other words, the Westboro Baptist Church they send out faxes every single day. They have like 14 members, and two of them have flippers. They're inbred, yeah. right? But the media can't get enough of them because they just roll a camera on them and they let them say their stuff. They don't need to edit out of context. In this Absolutely. case, clearly what you were saying wasn't offensive enough to make the cut, so they had to completely change answers to different questions. Let me ask you really quick, for people who don't necessarily follow you as closely yet, um, what are your views, in your own words, regarding Islam, immigration, kind of borders, the topics that he was trying to discuss? So, if, Islam, for example, I, I often, and through that interview, I said it numerous times, and I told him and I corrected him to stop conflating the issues. Um, You have Islam and you have Muslims. They are separate things. One's an ideology that I think needs to be criticised and needs to be judged. And the other is a people that you you cannot pick on as as a minority. Um, When it comes to uh, borders, I believe, you know, open borders doesn't seem to work for anybody. And, whoa, I get shut down. But you're a Jew, Avi. How can you say that after the Holocaust? And I... I go, well, my family, it was actually from Yemen as well. You know, one half of my family's from Yemen and they kind of ran away from the Arabs in 48, you know. Right. So, um, and what was the third one you put through? Uh, I think uh, I think it was immigration, Islam, um, and borders. That was it. No, I think you covered all, uh, all of it. <laughs> immigration in general, borders. Yeah, I mean, you're a Jew and so obviously Israel, you know, walls uh, tend to play a big part. It's almost <laughs> a central part <laughs> to the Jewish faith. <laughs> so <laughs> so I was like, how could you support walls? You're a Jew. I'm like, are we... <laughs> Are we having the same conversation? Of yeah, anyone, they would they would be they would be pro wall. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Avi, yeah, this is Gerald. So I I uh, I agree with you completely on Islam, right? You definitely have to to make sure that you separate the two people. But why why do you feel like this is the one religion in the world? No matter what you do, no matter how many times you end up on the news, screaming, yelling, cutting, blowing up, shooting, no matter what you do. You're still a protected class, whereas Christianity, we can come out and say, hey, we're really not pro-abortion guys. And all of a sudden we're labeled as the worst and most evil people, maybe maybe next to uh, Jews. For some reason, you guys, for some reason, they keep going after you and us. It's the two of us. And that's it. Yeah. What do you think? It's because the Jews are better than sneaky. So. Well, <laughs> yes, it's not true. <laughs> Um, there is an unholy alliance at the moment, and I see it on the front line. When I go to, I, you can see some of my earlier YouTube stuff. I've, I've gone to many rallies yeah. uh, to confront some of these, you know, leftist groups that align themselves literally with jihadis. Like yeah. I'm standing there at one of these rallies, and you can see it on YouTube. I'm standing there, and you've got three guys with a Hezbollah flag waving it, and this leftist transgender whatever just you know each to their own whatever but i'm just looking at him her whatever <laughs> yeah it doesn't no. bother me and, and and i'm just i'm going i go i go and i just look i go you realize 
they hate me a lot, and they hate me a lot. They do. And they will kill. They will kill me the moment they get a chance. To it's do in it. their charter. Yeah. But you're first. You're first. You're coming off that building before me. You're yeah. just a useful idiot. And you know, I think it, I think it's a number of things. It's uh, you know they're very good. At, they've had many years of playing victim, and they have the numbers. I think Jews have always lacked two things: is numbers, um, and unfortunately courage like my community has always thought standing back and you know appeasing whoever the threat has been works and historically it's never worked right right you know look at world war ii how'd that turn out for us so, so i think for us like you know the establishment jewish community they don't like me very much but those within my community who live in the real world they love me um, before, actually, I want to move on and get to kind of white supremacy because they tried to falsely label you with that. Uh, well, I don't want to say falsely. I want to let you speak for yourself. Maybe, maybe you're one of those Jewish white supremacists. I have no idea. Um, but I do want to show the clip here. Do we have it of Jim Jeffries and what he did off air with Islam? And then we can follow through on that train of thought. There we go. I'm not a big fan of Islam. I think that wearing a burqa is stupid and demeaning and all these things. Islam, Islam or dingo? Islam and dingo, dingo sneaky? Yeah. Probably both. Probably both. Dangerous? Right. Probably both. Probably both. I think I ate her baby. It turned yeah. out she, it did eat the baby. Yeah, if it ate a bloody Muslim baby, it would have vomited. Nah, no, I don't actually no, agree with that shit. I'm only joking. But that's not funny. You're talking about killing kids. No, it's not that's funny. That's crossing a line. There's a fucking uh, line. We've let it this bit out. I, I never look bad in these images. So let me ask you this. Wow, Here's my question. Yeah, and then he goes on to start drawing Muhammad. Again, I don't have a problem with it necessarily. Obviously, no, we've done it on I, this. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I made that clear in the video. Like, I don't have a problem. My problem is when you turn around and chop me up and, and point at me right. that I'm the one that somehow radicalized this nut job white supremacist to kill 50 innocent people. I, well, that's that's a question. So do you think this whole kind of woke persona with Jim Jeffries is is just to appease the Comedy Central, the Viacom gods? Because at one point, I remember people used to say this about Jim Jeffries. They'd say, Jim Jeffries is really politically incorrect. And I'd say, no, Jim Jeffries is just a lazy, angry comedian who uses the C word a lot. You know, he never actually touched on me. He'd say, oh, listen, I hate that woman. She's a c and you'd be like, everyone's like, oh, isn't he so on PC? And I realized, no, he always tiptoes around the actually sensitive issues. Do you think it's an act, uh, the whole woke well, thing? I th you, if you look at, yeah, uh, absolutely. I think he's playing to his his uh, audience. But the, what's interesting is that Jim Jeffries made it in America. In fact, right. I, you can argue he made it when he did that whole gun thing. Um, in Australia, nobody cared because, like you said, he literally just drops the C bomb every two minutes, and we, we're used to talking like that. So it's not—it's just not that funny. Right. But in America, I think <laughs> you guys fall for that, and I'm thinking. I'm hoping now that after we get off here, I've got a job at Comedy Central too. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. I mean, you have enough vowels in your last name, but, you know, unfortunately, these people, they're not really the observant Jews. They just like bagels. You know, they're secularists in our in our uh, Jewish Hollywood here. Um, so, okay, first, let me just kind of pivot here. Uh, are you a white supremacist? I got to get these out here so that I'm being balanced. No, I'm not, I'm not a white supremacist. I'm trying not to laugh. Do you have any when proof like, to back this up? How can you prove to me that you are not a white supremacist? Uh, are you wearing Are you wearing the, the little hat? No, I'm not wearing it today. I uh, actually do. Wear, so I, I do wear the kippa. Um, you know, I, I come from an ultra orthodox family. I'm I'm one of 17 kids. I'm the middle child of 17 kids. That wow. is my claim to fame. I have got middle child syndrome times 17. But I wear that kippa today not because I believe in God. I have my own problems with God and faith and whatever. I wear it in situations where I believe that I'm going to get called a Nazi or they're going to do something like they did there. And it ha and, and you will not believe how many times I have walked into um, different events. There was one with Milo here in Melbourne where I just walked into this crowd and suddenly you had chanting by huge groups of leftists and, again, jihadis, Avi is a Nazi, Avi is a Nazi, and I'm wearing a kippah on my head. Right. Well, they do it with, so if they do it with Ben Shapiro, I mean, you haven't really got a yeah. shot because, you but know. But he he's partly Nazi, I think. Is he, is he partly Nazi, Ben Shapiro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's one of those. He's just, it's, it's, he's a sleeper cell for the Nazi party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, if we were any other interviewing channel right there, that's the clip. That's yeah, the clip. Like, ben Shapiro is a Nazi. Big I always you know? knew this. <laughs> uh, let, let me ask you this because I've, you know, I used to, I was a. <laughs> Sorry. 
Watch your wings. What? Watch Shit. the wings of hell. Sorry, Hopper. Uh, this is just a nightmare interview. I'm sorry. You know, funny thing is, this will get more viewers than Jim Jeffries. Who who would have thought? This is how it works. Um, have you had experiences like this before with with media interviews and because pre- I, I was at Fox News for four and a half years, it's CNN, HLN, BBC, Sky News, all this stuff, and I had these experiences so often where I, I mainly just stopped appearing on on uh, uh, media, uh, particularly media, even media that ag- agreed with me. Yeah. I'll actually only do media uh, of opposing viewpoints, and I'll usually ask for the full tape, yeah. but I haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Had you run into this before? Is that why you were taping? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I have. I've had it, um, and it's, you know, I've, I've never had a problem doing things live. You know, I might fumble my words or whatever and come off a little bit stupid at some points, especially after a big night out, but I was always, you know, I was always able to get, I was ever, I was always confident that my words were not going to be distorted. Right. But a few times I've had different experiences on almost every single other news network here where they just do cut you up and you know they they'll, they'll say and 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 it's a it's it the argument that they have to cut it up for timing is fine and i agree with that sure. i do a lot of yeah. editing but my problem is when they cut it up and then mix it and match you know yeah. they'll ask you yeah. one question and then either pull get you pulling some f- weird facial expression or saying something just silly um, that's where that's where I've had the problem time and time again, and that's why now I don't think anyone's going to invite me for uh, um, many. Well, we <laughs> did, you know. Give us. It's like we don't yeah, even yeah, exist yeah. here. You're, you're not even happy to be here. Uh, you know, that's, that's my <laughs> not anyone reputable, at least. Yeah, not anyone reputable. So, so I, had a, I had a question for you. So the uh, the people in the audience. So if we were to walk out into that audience and find maybe the most logical person <laughs> chanting that you were a Nazi, if that's possible to exist. What do you think that they would use as evidence? What do you think that they would say is your most controversial well, it's, position? It's, no, no, no. It's actually interesting because in the beginning, they used, there's this one site ran run in Australia by Jews against uh, fascists, so yeah. Jewish Antifa, okay. self-hating Jews. Let's just put it out there. Uh, <laughs> well, hold on, so let me make it clear. Hate. They're not self-hating Jews because they hate fascism. There's no, most yeah, yeah. Jews hate fascism. I think <laughs> we're all yeah. on board with but, not yeah. liking fascism. Correct. It's the no, anti yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. They hate Israel. They hate Zionists. They hate anyone yeah. who right. lives in Israel. Or if you happen to be Jewish, right? So the, at first they had they had this article, and and it's one of it's a top article that you find if if you look for me, um, and it, it used to the title used to be um, the seven, uh, six times Avi was a, a Nazi or something, and then they realized how silly it sounded, that they changed it to. Now it's the seven times Avi has consorted with Nazis, right? And that's what huh. these this this is what all these different leftist groups, especially the non, the majority of them aren't Jewish, but they just refer to that. They go, oh yeah, yeah, you're, not, you're obviously you're not a Nazi, even though just thirty seconds ago you were chanting, I am, right? But you, you're obviously not. You you just consort with them. You allow right. them to thrive, and and it's like you know everybody on that list that they that they actually put there hates me right i don't like them they've <laughs> captured like me at one event where some dude who i didn't know walked up to shake my hand and i'm just not a rude person somebody walks up if, if i knew he was a nazi at the time or a neo-nazi or whatever, obviously i wouldn't shake his hand i don't yeah. like nazis i know they well but they that, don't all look like ed furlong in american history x they don't have the neck <laughs> tattoos anymore sometimes it's hard they've done a rebranding no listen i've had this where people accuse me of being a nazi and then a famous neo-nazi website yep. of yep. course once they found out i supported uh, israel's right to exist started doing these false memes and they put fake swastika tattoos on my chest on my neck like fake yeah. photoshops uh with quotes that said you know hang the jews gas the n-words all those yeah. kinds of these horrible things and we sent them to twitter and said hello these are fake tweets tweets that I've never tweeted out. Yeah. They said, oh, it's not a violation of our policies. So Nazis <laughs> realize they could do more damage by claiming people as their own because they don't like Jews. So they'll actually do that sometimes. They're actually sort of false uh, flag I, attacks. I, I have the same uh, right now. I go, so following the Jim Jeffrey thing, I've been kicked off Facebook again. Mm. Um, but all now if you look up my name, any pages, they're all fake pages in my name that do similar things. Right. So if you go on, and, and I've reported them, but they... <laughs> Those don't breach any of their terms. No, they, they don't. They're, you know, those, they're pesky community standards. Right. 
Or things with legal precedent like libel and slander. Like, no, 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 no. we're more offended that, uh, you know, you made a transgender man. Uh, and I go, hold on, was that male to female or female to male? Like, you know what, let's just go with pansexual. We don't really want to go with the drop down menu today and have to do a whole redesign. Yeah, this is, it really is a remarkable time that we're living in um, where they just throw around this this moniker, Nazi, all of the time. Let me, what, what's, what's the fallout here? First off, I think Sa- Sam Roberts and Jim Norton were talking about this. They said, could you imagine if a conservative show had, had done this? And they actually said, you know, Oh, if, if, if Louder with Crowder, they mentioned this show, it was very kind of them to say, yeah. if they had edited someone out of context. We have had far left people on the show. Yeah. You will never find someone on this show who will say that we've edited them out of context or t- screwed up the timeline sequence. <laughs> we've had two guests who we've ever edited. One was because the guest requested afterward it was something that was a liability, yeah, and yeah. one was a guy who basically fell asleep and was so boring. We're like, we just can't, <laughs> we just can't run this. Um, we never do that, and, and it's by design. This is, and this is also an entertainment show. So I understand, like you said, you have to edit for time, especially if it's a comedy yeah. show. But when I watched this segment, by the way, it wasn't really. Uh, uh, designed for comedy, for laughs. It was much more so designed yeah. around making a political statement, whereas Jon yeah. Stewart would Absolutely. go for the funny first often. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and, and that's the thing, the argument that, that, that it's just a comedy show, and you should not, how, are you telling me that he went into that to make a whole joke about the Christchurch massacre? Because that's almost worse. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so it, it obviously wasn't a comedy thing. It, it, it was obviously there designed to, you know, in, invoke people's, uh, well, what's, here's the thing also, what's the, what's the joke? It's like, oh, Avi's a Nazi? <laughs> He's really not? That's not the joke. Now, if he, if he thought your views were crazy, for example, let's say you had some really radical view yep. on, it, uh, on immigration, right? Like, to me, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example, like, I don't know, no borders, open borders, you know, radical view. Let's say you had a view like that. <laughs> the view, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and he would just wanted to showcase it. Hey, this is a joke because what he's saying is crazy. But you're not going in for comedy if you're saying he's a Nazi, and he's not. That's not a joke. That's just a well, lie. His angle, if you watch it, his angle was literally going, the joke was, you see, the one thing that can unite Jews and Nazis today is their, their joint hate for Muslims. That's, that was literally what he said in there, yeah. which was factually wrong, disgraceful, and to do it after Christchurch is just offensive. And I'm not someone that's easily offended. Right. But... If I did, I'm just so grateful that I put those cat. Like I, I just imagine today if I'd done that interview and let that air and not had my own footage to. Kind oh, of you would have never myself. been able to clear your name. I had that happen before. Yeah. I had it happen where articles in Washington Post or how Young Turks would do videos about. And I, back then, I didn't have a platform. I didn't have the forethought, so I, I, I was never able to clear my name. It's an amazing time now where you can. You know, I sat under the tutelage of Andrew Breitbart, and I think one of the perfect examples. He sat down with. Uh, um, I think it was Martin Bashir. Oh, that guy's a smug prick. Um, anyway, I mean, he is the def- like you look up smug, talentless bag of pricks in the dictionary. It's got Martin Bashir's face next to it. Anyways, Martin Bashir is sitting there interviewing Andrew Breitbart. And they always try to accuse him of being a Nazi, by the way. He was part Jewish. And I remember Martin Bashir's interviewing him, asking about his views, uh, views on race. He goes, you know, what about those who say you're all racist? And he just said, name me, can you name me one thing, one thing that I've said that is racist? And then Martin Bashir pivots to, what's your relationship like with alcohol? And Andrew Breitbart just said, why are you asking me this? Why are you asking me this question? And I remember the leftist media, yeah. this was back before yeah. Breitbart was a thing. This is back before this show was really a thing. The media tried to say, Andrew Breitbart becomes unhinged at Martin Bashir. He said, what's your relationship with alcohol? He said, why are you asking me this? And they tried to act like he was crazy. And yeah. I, when I saw that happen, more people went and watched the clip on YouTube. And I saw the comments go, I don't know who this Andrew Breitbart guy is, but he totally owned this Martin Bashir. And I feel like that was a turning point because now there's more sunlight. And at one point, no one would have heard your side. So are, are you at least grateful for, for, for that? I know this has been an ordeal, but man, that's a blessing. I, I, I'm, I am. And, and I'll tell you, like I, I told you I said, in the beginning, I sat on that footage because I also was going to give them the benefit of doubt. I, I could have made a video either way. Right. But we had an agreement. And I was like, maybe, because even after I sat with him, I thought, he's, he's all right. Like, he's actually all right. And he's kind of reasonable, has some wacky ideas, but he's okay. And when I saw it, I was actually, I was at a Purim thing the other night, a Purim event, and some like real religious Jew turns to me and goes, oh, I saw you last night on Jim Jeffrey's show. Oh, he totally butchered you. He slaughtered you. I'm like, I didn't even know it was out. Yeah. And then like I'm half, you know, Purim. I was like, right. and I watched it and 
then I should have put my phone down, but then I just went Wait, on. Wait, were you just? What was this, are you signifying that Purim is Purim is a real party? Is that what you're saying? I, see, I'm a, I'm a gentile. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're a goy. So <laughs> you basically, I looked like you now. Okay. <laughs> see, I don't know. See, intoxicated. <laughs> see, our equivalent, I guess, we don't really have it. Like, but like Thanksgiving, Halloween, I guess, in the United States, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not that crazy. So I, I picture Purim as like a family <laughs> gathering, not really a big party. But okay, you learn some. Ben Shapiro yeah, would be fun on Purim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's actually a lot of funny when he uh, when he has a few Budweiser. Uh, I just have, I just, uh, no, no, I'm no. Because yeah. I see my YouTube comments, people say that I wear the kipper better. But the point is, I, 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 people, I'd seen, I, I watched the footage there on point, and I just, I, I couldn't believe the level of hack job they did to me. And, the, you know, I was expecting it to a level, but then to put me with Christchurch, I just, I was shocked. Yeah, and this this should be noted for people who don't know. This interview was taped long before the Christchurch shooting, yeah. long, and they aired yeah. it afterwards, and they connected it retroactively. Yeah. Which, by the way, again, there's forgiveness there in media where sometimes things just air late, of course, and you go, "Oh, now it's more timely." Right. But they directly tried to tie this yeah. uh, to Absolutely Christchurch, right. which was they, just they literally said, "Let's look at the people who radicalized him." Yeah, and then they had like a couple of the Nazis, the ones that weren't supposed to be on it, and then they had me. <laughs> Well, here's something interesting to me, too, because you mentioned sort of this this uh, leftist coalition between Muslims and sort of the LGBTQ, at least in the United States, you know, Rashid Tlaib and all this stuff. But historically, if you look at this, um, the Nazis actually allied themselves more with the Muslim world. Historically, yeah. if you look at it, Nazis have a much greater use for Islam than they do the Jews in any capacity. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at uh, the, uh, what was he, the Mufti of Jerusalem and Hitler were literally met. Right. So yeah. um, there is an alignment. And look, I also believe if you look at the ideologies, there are a lot of uh, similarities there where it, it does align. Yeah. Yeah. It's, an, it's, a, it's also it's a political prescription and ideology. That's the thing with Islam that's very different from most religions. People don't understand. It is a political prescription. It outlines how you're supposed to also run a system yeah. of government. Yeah. It, 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 it does also have the religious things. Sure. You know, yeah. it, it does have the religious aspects to it. And, that, and that's fine. And, and that's the part that you and me probably, and the majority of people that are uh, that have an issue with it don't have an issue with that aspect of 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 Islam. It's more the political, right? And you know the whole jihadi side. Yeah, that's kind of an issue for me. You know, once people start uh, blowing people up, I go, hold on a well, second, yeah, wait, yeah, I think we cross some lines. A little bit of a line. Well, well I, I, again, this is another thing that I pointed out in the show, in the in in the actual thing. I said to him, listen. I don't have a problem. Like I come from what you can argue is a fundamentalist religion, religious sect. I know what fundamentalism, fundamentalism in in religion kind of does to people. Right. I think you like I'm good friends with the chief rabbi of Australia. I always tell him, I go, I think you guys are all nuts. You all believe in fairy tales, but I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I enjoy having a drink with you guys. I enjoy talking, you know, discussing issues, whatever. My problem is when your ideas and your religion or your God is preaching to you to hurt me or kill me, yeah. that's where like, I kind of draw the line. Yeah, I've even said that when people try to paint, we, to go back to the Westboro Baptist uh, Church, I'm like, well, yeah. hold on a second, they're not really Christians. They're 14 members. They're not al aligned with any mainstream Christian denomination. But even then, as far I go, hey, hold on a second, they're not Christians. They're jerks. But you know what? The guy has a sign that says God hates f I go, he has the right to do that. I think he's a jerk, but it <laughs> yeah. doesn't really, he's not hurting yeah. anybody physically. And I understand if people want to get into specifics as far as libel laws, if they claim something about somebody. But even then, yeah. there are some crazy religions out there where I, I go, everything they think is wrong. I don't care. It's when you physically commit acts of violence and do so consistently on a global scale in the name of religion. And, even, yeah, and also when they're, when they're consistently inciting it. Yes. You know, you'll kick me off Facebook for offending somebody, hurting somebody's feelings. But every Friday in any kind of religious structure, you can hear incitement um, against me. Yeah. Every or, single week. Or just, nobody just hear any Farrakhan sermon. Any Farrakhan sermon in the oh, States. Yeah. I'm like, how is this? How is this still a thing? This is unbelievable. <laughs> So, yeah, one of the things I wanted to bring up, it's really ironic or interesting. I'm not sure which I think Courtney's going to get on to me for saying ironic in the wrong place. Probably. Um, it's that they are saying Literally. that you're a Nazi and they're doing something that Nazis have done. They're doing something that people in the United States did with kind of the Red Scare with communists. They basically just throw everything you say under this umbrella term so that nobody will believe you because of that one thing. 
That's exactly what the Nazis did to discredit Jews, right? That was all the propaganda. That's exactly what some politicians in the United States did to credit somebody who was a communist, right, right. that lived in the United States. It's, it's so strange. And I guess you're now this cautionary tale. If you're going to do an interview with somebody, make sure you get the footage, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's a really difficult thing to do. But you have to fight that because right now we live in a, a society where you can just throw somebody under the bus by saying Nazi, just like Ben Shapiro got done by the Economist, alt right is like, are you serious? Yep. Right. Like now, now everybody. That's a good point, though, of, that they use that same kind of propaganda yeah. against the Jews. The Nazis used it That's against exactly the Jews, and did. now they're using it, painting everyone as a Nazi. Yeah, they showed they showed movie theater footage of uh, rats running and talking about Jews, right, right before movies. They did the same yeah. thing with Japan, showing them as these hulking beasts coming to like pull your skull out of your head. Like, you're, I'm not kidding. <laughs> they showed the it's, Japanese it's crazy, as right? hulking beasts. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a little out there, right? They had a little bit of too much uh, art budget on that one. But is there a question? Question coming, Joe? Well, because I'm is, very physically, I'm very physically uncomfortable. <laughs> so, so the question is how, uh, short of just asking for this footage and short of having the platforms like this, how do you get, how do you get the message out to people? I mean, because it's got to be very frustrating. You're right in the middle of it. It's well, a good question. Stop with the question. Yeah. All right, Avi. That's What's just, your answer? How do, you, how do other people fight it who don't necessarily have your platform? Well, I, I didn't always have my platform. That's the thing. Like, you know what? I think today people are looking for the truth. And that's why That's why now, when I first lost my first Facebook page with 200,000 followers, it killed me. I was gutted because it was the only platform I used. And I thought, that's the end of me having a platform. Mm -hmm. And then I just opened different accounts on all the other platforms. And I realized that people are just looking for the truth today. There is so much rubbish out there. And there is so much shoved down everybody's throat through the mainstream media, especially. Um that people are looking for the truth. So if you just keep producing the truth, and right now, like I know my phone's is probably not going to cut it anymore, so I'm going to invest in a little spy camera because I don't think anybody's not going to. I think they're going to take my phone <laughs> yeah. away. Do it duct tape to your chest. What's that, Abby? <laughs> Nothing. It's my new pacemaker. It's a religious symbol. Right. Um, <laughs> I need uranium to keep my heart beating properly. Um, my name is now Stark. Please just continue with your day. No, I think it, it, you're you're right. And I didn't always have this platform. And people are, I noticed a big shift because I was public enemy number one on YouTube for a long oh, yeah. time because there was no one else there back in 2008, 2009, no one. And now there is more of a coalition. You have a coalition, yeah. by the way, of pe people like uh, serious libertari libertarians, then you have traditional conservatives, and you do have some alt-right people on there with whom I would disagree, but you do have yeah. a much broader coalition than just the far, far radical left, which by the way, I feel confident saying is all of mainstream media now. Yeah. There really yeah. is. They're, they're all radical left. Yeah. Look at what Jim Jeffries did. That's radical yeah. to me. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. A question to you uh, before we go. What's the fallout been? Uh, I, if I understand this correctly, didn't he disable Instagram comments <laughs> after this? Uh, it's, it's, it's been unbelievable. I thought it was going to force him to actually respond or Comedy Central to make some sort of statement. And – all that's happened is that they're, they're trying this tactic of ignoring. And you've got to understand, if you look at Twitter, like just look, Jim Jeffrey comments in the last week, tweets have, have literally been consistent almost every minute for the last week. And all they've done is they're banning anyone. And you can look on my Twitter, you can see like I've, I've put a uh, tweet up there saying, if you've been banned, just share a screenshot. And you just see hundreds upon hundreds of screenshots of people who have been banned and they've even shared what they've said. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's nothing really controversial, nothing bad. Just saying, are you going to just stand up and own what you did or apologize or something? Nothing. So they, their tactic is to ignore it. They think it's going to go away. And that, this is where they should have spoke to my mum. <laughs> they don't know that I am persistent and I'm going, it is good until I get a response, until they actually stand up and face the music and respond to what they've done because what they did was wrong on any left. I don't care if you're from the left, the right. I don't care who you are. What they did, and I'm not even talking about his comments at the end there, which, you know what, like, I, like he's in, 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 this, in the scope of comedy, I have no problem with it. Right. I personally probably wouldn't say half the things he said, but I'm talking about the actual editing, the ethics of what they did there to try ruin me. Yeah. That is wrong to anyone. And that's what they've got to just face. But uh, I say good luck to them to keep trying to ignore them because it only – in fact, it's it's only working to my benefit. I think if they would have just said something the first day, it probably would have just gone away. Yeah. That's very interesting. And, 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 you know, ironically, their content is still up there. Facebook knows it's fake news. Facebook, you know, it's defamatory. 
and I'm my one got deleted off Facebook. It's very my interesting. One, the, my, I'm not familiar with the entirety of this case, and we have people looking into it. That's uh, that's Jack. That's Jack Dorsey for you. A little bit oh, of Jack Dorsey. Dorsey. Uh, um, one of the two. By the way, I don't. I don't want to blow. But I, I've heard rumors circulating that you might be taking legal action. There might be some recourse here. Can you let people know about that or where to go and follow you? Um, is this I'm coming. So look on YouTube is probably YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Like, I don't know. You know, every day yesterday, my good friend Tommy Robinson's been basically banned from. Uh, I know you had him on a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, has been banned from YouTube as well. So to be honest, the only platform I know that's uh, that's trustworthy for us to put out our content is tr.news. News. Okay. Um, that's where we're we're going to run everything through. But uh, for now, YouTube, Twitter. We're gonna, I'm coming to the states. Yeah. Um, we've got a bit of a tour. It's going to be quick, sharp. There's some good fun in there, and including what what you're saying, we'll announce properly when we're there. It's tr dot tr dot news, tr dot news, tr dot news. Yeah. And by the way, you were talking about this before the break. You're like, I, ho- I hope they let me in the the the, the states. It's not your country. You need to understand here. They don't ban you. Like I can't go back to Canada yeah. to perform. I'm afraid of that. You don't need to be afraid in the United States. They're not gonna they're not gonna kick you out for saying something offensive. They don't care. Uh, uh, I, I've got a visa. I've got a visa. I'm, I'm about to test it. I'm, I'm about to test it because, and uh, you know, I, I just question because obviously Kanye Central knows I'm coming. Yeah. I haven't hidden that fact. I've been pushing this idea. I'm calling it my American tour against the, to fight the fake news. So I want to see how far Comedy Central is going to push it because if I get to, because I've been to America a number of times, I've never had a problem. So if I get there and I'm not let in, we know exactly what it is and who's behind I, it. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, there's a, the, you, uh, might, you might have problems with your visa as far as earning here, but you can still come here and visit. Whereas, you know, uh, for me, I wouldn't be able to go to certain areas of the UK. This is probably the first time a Jew is saying this live on air, I am coming to America not to earn a dollar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unless we, unless, unless you include running your banks, is that included? Well then, all right, maybe a few dollars, <laughs> just some pocket change, yeah. Um, no, I'm just, ah, sorry, but I know you don't run all the banks. The line, man. Oh yeah, I know. It's almost like Jim Jeffries. I here's the, I don't get the Jim Jeffries thing. I don't get the Trevor Noah thing. I always thought John Stewart was funny. Yeah, I do think yeah. John Oliver is funny. I, I disagree. With him. I think he's funny. I've never gotten the Jim Jeffries thing and the John Oliver thing. I think a big part. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the Trevor Noah thing. Trevor Noah is worse than Jim Jeffries. Jim yeah. Jeffries has at least produced a couple of smirks when I've watched him. <laughs> Trevor Noah uh, makes me angry. Like I would rather be watching hardcore pornography with my mother than have to sit through <laughs> Trevor Noah. It's that uncomfortable. It's that unfunny. I'm just sitting there like, oh, I can't believe that made air. All right, tr dot news and that's where people can follow your American tours you come out here. And if there are any legal issues that, that arise. And I, I keep it tight-lipped, but I, I do hope you do something uh, there and uh, hopefully find yourself a, a good uh, good Jewish-American lawyer not not named Avenatti. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait, he's, not, well, he's not Jewish. That's why he's not a good That's why he got caught. Oh, uh, yeah. You, never, yeah you, you don't hire an Italian lawyer. What do you, <laughs> you'll on. lose everything. All right. Thank you so much, Avi. We appreciate it, brother. We appreciate you uh, uh, helping, the, helping to shine a light on this. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Hey there, if you like this video, this is the part where I would usually tell you to subscribe, but... I can't do it anymore. I'm gonna tell you to subscribe, and then YouTube is going to decide that we can't reach you even though you subscribe to this channel, and then I'll say hit the notification bell, and then the notification bell won't even be there anymore. I don't know what to say. More than likely, you'll find my face in a milk carton. But do what you can to stop it. It's just, it's just, it probably won't do much.